Hi, welcome to a brand new series called the Ecclesia, which of course is the called out, which is a series where we are going to make commentary about the chosen. So this is the called out talking about the chosen. Have I got that? Got it. I Ecclesia. Keep that? Yeah, Ecclesia. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am Jeff Dixon. I'm joined by Leanne Stair. Richard Israel. <laughs> He's so confused. <laughs> Michael Simmons. <laughs> and we are the church at 434 in beautiful Winter Springs, Florida, where mm -hmm. it's always winter and there's always a spring and we're always there. And, um, <laughs> and, and we're going to be talking about what is really providing a commentary, I guess, for um, the television show, streaming media show, The Chosen, which has kind of taken um, the Christian world, but also the non-Christian world oh, right by storm right. and has really kind of an amazing thing. Now, if you're obviously if you're watching this, we think you're familiar with it. But <laughs> the Chosen is a series where um, you basically um, get the story of Jesus from the people who were chosen to follow him, uh, and the writers and the creators of the story. I think have done a pretty good job. They're great um, storytellers with yeah. with telling the story, and while they're being true to Scripture, they're giving you in essence uh, a story that is kind of between the lines of Scripture, if you will. Uh, and so, as we get started, we're actually going to talk in this episode about the pilot, um, which is about a 20-minute film uh, called The Shepherd, which mm -hmm. is a Christmas story as well. And so, the first thing that we're going to talk about uh, in, this, in this particular episode is just, um, one, I mean, what, what is your, I mean, what is your impression of that? I mean, I was going to say, what's the main character, but the main <laughs> character is the shepherd. So, what, what's... What stood out about that shepherd, that character that they decided that we're going to launch this whole series with in this, in this pilot? Well, for me, the, the stark thing that I think was got my attention, and uh, I'm finding out as I watch the series, it's almost like Little House on the Prairie. I'm going to cry at least once in every episode. There's something that they are bringing to life that I had not thought about. But for me, watching the shepherd, and it's probably, see, uh, that we're guilty of it even today, is um, the religious people wanted nothing to do with him. He wasn't good enough because uh, he brings a lamb, and you know, and he's got questions, man. He's got questions about faith because I've been studying Torah, and I am hungry, and I want to know. But the priest was so wrapped up in, this is the lamb you brought. This is trash. You come back. We're never going to have you again. And just um, how he did not find what he was looking for within the church body. And that, that really just, oh, do we do that all the time? And where do these people go then um, mm. to find the answers? So for her, the, <laughs> lamb, the lamb was bad. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the, um, the brokenness of the shepherd, right, as manifest right. in his physical deformity or his yeah. challenge with his leg and, and what will happen later on in the episode. Uh, as how, as 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 they the storytellers remind us that Jesus has come to fix the broken, right? Uh, I do love that uh, that element of who He is, and, and I love that in spite of His brokenness, there is that propensity to give. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, even, that was kind of cool. That, I, I like that. Yeah, I like right. that. So, like that. Do you watch the episode? Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, he didn't cry though. You cry? Y'all no, no. aren't gonna cry. I will cry. cry. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, the same thing they said. I mean, it pretty much sums it up as far as uh, his searching of truth, uh, even to the point to where he would enter into, you know, a closed meeting to try to find, um, you know, the truth, and he was really interested in hearing about it until he was thrown out. Uh, he pretty much had a miserable life, uh, yeah. in, you know, in general. And I think shepherds in general, even the guys that he was hanging out with, were very, you know, downtrodden. Yeah, this part guy was like of society. a low bar shepherd. I mean, he was, <clears throat> he was the lowest of the shepherds, but the rest of the shepherds were, you know, pretty much outcast too, mm -hmm. uh, in that in that kind of ecosystem that they had. So, I I, I see that as you know they were they were searching. And even the, the shepherds really didn't know what they believed. Yeah. But this guy, you know, held on to there's hope. That's what I got out of the whole yeah. whole thing. There's hope. Uh, and that's sometimes that's all you have. Yeah. And really, if, if you want to know the truth, that's all you need to have. Sure. So that's what I got out of him is the reception of, 
of the hope coming. Yeah. And it was over 400 years since the prophecies. They, mm -hmm. These religious dudes were just reciting from the Old Testament prophecies. Yeah. And right? he also points that out. I love mm -hmm. the way that it kind of does that little graphic at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's, uh, for, for me, too, I mean, I'm, I'm with you. I, I love the fact that it is the Christmas story, but it is not the way that we normally see the Christmas story, this Christmas story through the eyes of the shepherd. I think that's really cool. And I also like the way that that shepherd as a character is, there's a brokenness to him, but he is searching. He is really looking. He, he is, um, he's desperate for hope. He, he's, he's really trying to come up with the answers and trying to put it together. And I mean, and, and he comes as that, that person that in, in the midst of all this thing, I mean, he, it's worth whatever he has to do to find out because he, cause he knows, he knows, right? I mean, he has to know when he brings that, that lamb, well, that lamb ain't gonna cut. I mean, he has, to, he has to know all that stuff in the back of his head and he's trying to keep up with the other shepherds and he can't and I mean, and, and so, I mean, he's a kind of a pitiful character. I mean, you feel sorry for this guy instantly. I did, I was like, mm -hmm. man, I, yeah, I mean, you, he connect, but you're like, man, I feel, I feel bad for you. And, I'm, we're, and we, we get the story though through his eyes which I think for the chosen, though, is perfect, right? Because it's a story, it's a Christmas story that's really not about Jesus, but it is. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was, I thought that, to me, that was one of the cool things about the episode. Based on Luke 2, mm -hmm. uh, but what they did is they read between the lines of Luke 2. And so, uh, where does this, where, they might know where this thing comes from. I mean, why did they, why, why this pilot? Why did they do it? Yeah, um, well, the producer, I think Dallas Jenkins, right? Uh, he, um, He's a producer of films, but he had had one that tanked. So this was a very low life or a low life moment for him where things were just not going well. And he was praying about what to do, what to do. And his church had asked him, hey, can you do this Christmas thing for us? And that just kind of started and kind of was the thing that initiated then the chosen being made because he did such a great job in the way that he told the story and the characters that he brought in. So it kind of launched that for me, I thought that was pretty cool because I was like, it comes back to Christmas, <laughs> you know, with Christmas dreams. That just is at the heart of, you know, Jesus entering our world and then how do we share that with everyone? So I think it's pretty, pretty cool the way out of failure came a huge triumph that is touching and, and I think changing the world right now. And so for us, and as a pilot, and the pilot, uh, I guess, at least from, from our perspective of how we can communicate it to you, if you haven't seen the pilot, um, it is available as an extra on um, the DVD collection, which is that the deluxe collection, collection is also available on the app, though. And so it's in the extra section of the app, and it's called The Shepherd, and Shepherd. it is called The Pilot, or yeah, it's a Christmas, Christmas story. Uh, and you can see it there. Uh, but it's safe to say that for all of us, though, we, it kinda read, we enjoyed it. It was an interesting take on the Christmas story. I enjoyed the time, and I enjoyed this about The Chosen. Um, I enjoy the time they take to imagine between the lines right. to tell us the story. I loved Joseph had a face. Yeah. I love Joseph had a response when, when the shepherds show up. I love that dad moment that says back off and then that face. I love the pantomime of it all and the, the you know the, 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 the relaxing when you recognize that these are not only people who are friendly, but these are people who are gonna affirm what you'd been told yeah. you know, months before and you've you, you know the risk that you're taking right now is being affirmed by these guys. I just loved how he's, how his facial expression told story. Oh, it's a pretty powerful moment. Pretty power, powerful, powerful, uh, and a lot of fun. And we're going to come back in the next episode um, of The Shepherd and talk about the moment in the film that resonated the most and why, or moments if you really want to go crazy with it, um, <laughs> and, and why it resonated with you so much, okay? Mm -hmm. And so that wraps up the Ecclesia. So we are the called out talking about the chosen. <laughs> go figure. And we look forward to joining you here next time.